gotta get it how it goes now. You gotta take it off the nose. It's off the, it's off the nose. Gotta get back in control now. Let's stop believing in ourselves. It's off the, it's off the, it's off the nose. First guy in, last guy out. The work ethic. I might yeah. not come from money. I don't. I'm not the smartest kid in the room, but I will work circles around you, and I refuse to go home until the last person's done. And that yeah. was just the mindset. And so when I got to California, and and I got the opportunity. Now, why to California? Was, you know, I never envisioned it. Um, California was. I was living in Oregon. I wanted to move back to Minneapolis and do gastro pub food concepts with micro brews, right? So yeah. in Oregon, going to college, my buddy's brewing beer in his garage. He submits it to the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, wins a gold medal out of like 2,000 beers. And I think to myself, dude. This is it. You know, this is great. Like on the West Coast, if you if you put a peppercorn in, a, in mayonnaise and decide to call it aioli, you can charge $2 more for a fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> Right? Like this, this is, is true. This is great. Yeah. It costs, you know, 15 cents to brew a beer and you can sell them for three bucks. I mean, I don't feel like I need a college degree to figure to out. To figure that out. Like this yeah. is what we're going to do. Yeah. So the intent with coming to California was to work for these great restaurants, learn food costs, learn employment. If you can operate in California, you could easily go back to the Midwest, like a place like Minneapolis and open up these gastro pub food concepts that did you know, walleye sliders with peppercorn aioli and gourmet tater tots, fried chicken sandwiches, you know, eight beers and just go college town USA. Sure. Like elevate it. And this so was what was year? Plan. I mean, way before. Yeah, this was, uh, I was in, I was 2000 to 2002. So okay. 2003 is when I moved to Napa. Yep. It's 22. 22 and your dad kicked you in the ass said good luck said uh, yes. well, how, how did that go how did that go well um did you write a letter and leave he's in the a night? little bit more of um you know he's a little bit more buttoned up maybe you could say and so when i was going to oregon um i think the quote was uh if you want to go smoke dope with those hippies knock yourself out but do not call me for anything I unless die. you're sick or dying don't call me because you sow your own road and I won't help do it. So those were kind of the, the feelings when I left. It was obviously my father he loves his son, et cetera, et cetera. But um, if that's what you're going to choose to do, if you're going to leave North Dakota, going to college and then go out to, to Oregon to, to hang out with, in his mind, you know, a bunch of yeah. uh, hippies and whatnot. Then. He had foresight. I mean, he, he didn't know that they were going <laughs> to approve marijuana and yeah dad, i know dad right? knew what I mean, was going on that's another story i mean that's a story that eats into um you know some of the headwinds that our industry faces yeah from labor standpoints to consumption standpoints and uh and lots of lots of different challenges that's right headwinds. did he did you ever think about going to college you know i was in college a little bit um i was never just I would sit in the classroom and I would look outside <laughs> and you would see life going by, right? And it was yeah. just going by. And yeah. so for me, um, I was the product of three different colleges, you know, probably, uh, you know, a couple uh, semesters away from multiple um, degrees, but I just never ended up doing it. I was always fascinated with history. I was a big history yeah. buff. And so I enjoyed those classes, did some business because that was the thing to do, but never ended up uh, finishing um, school. Yeah. Uh, it was always well, sort funny. of- funny. Uh, Today, it's, it's so different. I don't think it near, nearly has the stigma um, it used to have. And really, you know, especially with Corona, now who knows what will happen. Um, and I think people are just going to learn different and certifications and two-year programs and things like that. I think will probably be the wave of I'm the a future. Huge I mean, to your program. there's a lot Stepping of stones. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how the hell are you supposed to know what you want to do at 18? You're and not. And so like, what if, what if like regional high schools said junior year, there's a vocation, like you, you're going to go into welding. You're going to go into programming. You're going to go, you know, yep. in Texas, Oklahoma, let's look at some welding for the energy industry. Obviously it's not a great time for that, but 
In the Bay Area, let's look at some technology type stuff. In Alabama, Tennessee, let's look at healthcare type programs. There's all these regional pockets of strength that if we give somebody an opportunity to, to access that into college and, or into high school, and then you do a two year program right out, of, right out of high school, you're now putting people in positions to make a really nice living. And then and with the entrepreneurial spirit that exists, the American way, the American dream, people have these tools that they can then apply and go build their business and go be that American dream. And for me, I think the educational system um, in some ways is very good, obviously, but in some ways it's, it's, um, it's criminal, you know, if you go bankrupt, the only two things that they can't, I mean, they, they, your student loans are never forgiven. It, no. It's what a, what a random thing, right? That's a rigged joke. Totally, totally. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see how all that works. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to comment um, intimately on it, but I do have some ideas about it. But Yeah, well, I like you know, what you're saying. It's a, I'm, it's a passion for me too. I, I don't have kids that have any interest in college, but as a parent, you think, I think we have to check that safety box, even though I really don't want to check the safety box. It's sort of this conundrum and nobody's talking to them in high school or inspiring them. You know, they just, they just check in. Cruising it's mostly through, yeah. for athletes and girls. I mean, let's just yeah, be real. Yeah. Right. You know, oh, go ahead. please. No, that's it. Yeah. Um, I, I had a point I lost it, but, uh, um, it's just about as, high school and not being inspired. Yeah. So for me, I guess what college gave me coming from such a small town was like the social dynamics that, that really um, helped a kid from a small town, just different cultures and different things coming together. So it, it was very valuable to me, but not in a way in which it taught me anything I didn't know from, from like a, a textbook type of space. It was right. more the social dynamics that... I cued in and I learned certain things and it erased certain ignorances and, and yeah. just things that you weren't exposed to growing up in small, small town, um, middle of nowhere. Uh, yep. So positives and, and negatives, like anything in life. You know, but you don't have this, oh, one day I'll get that degree and put her on yeah, the wall. I, you want to know what I've been piping What are you going to put lately? on the wall? Yeah, what is um, it? I've been... I really, I wanted, before all this was going down, I wanted to go over to um, Portugal or Spain and sort of bring back like this old hardcore beat up vineyard that had, you know, 90 years, a hundred year old vines and this little cobblestone home. And I wanted to like bring it back to life and I'd spend my summers over there and I'd learn the language, et cetera. But what I love really, this. really love, I just adore history. Like it's so fascinating to me. Yeah. And for me, you know, the religious comp components of history, all of the different um, perspectives and how history was shaped. And so I, I love the city of Rome. I, I, it's as a kid from North Dakota who didn't grow up going anywhere. Um, you can't I believe that people movies. like walk past the Coliseum to go to work. Yeah, They're like, what right? the fuck? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and I had these, and I had this unbelievable guide who was so smart and like you had to go to school for six years to be able to do this and to me it was like you know what all always in my mind that's the stuff that interested me I want to go live there and I want to go take courses and yes. I want to go all the way back and then I want to come to the conclusion of what is this world and what is this moment that we're in on my terms instead of sort of these terms that were dictated to me. Totally out way. of some outdated book, textbook. You yeah. know, I, yeah, I'm I mean, with I you. just want to, I, I, I use it as a, as a guideline and, 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 but I use a lot of different things as a guideline. So yeah. how do you come to sort of that understanding? So that's one well, of the pretty things much, that I think I would do. You know, by high school, I think you've learned everything you really need to know. Like I, mm -hmm. I can't look my kids in the face and not say, you're going to use that. I, I look at them and say, you're never going to use that. So study or don't study. I don't know what to tell you. You're never going to use that, right? I mean, past algebra, yeah, oh. it's, it's good to be able to do, you know, figure out what your profit might be if you're selling donuts or whatever you decide to do one day. <laughs> yeah. So there's a little bit of that. But Connoisseur that, of donuts, by the way. I mean, I'm a huge fan. Okay. I love donuts. Do donuts go with wine? 
They can. Yeah. I mean, is you this can... a sneak peek into the future of Dakota Shy? Actually, no, the sneak peek could be like uh, fried chicken sandwiches and gourmet tater tots. Ooh. That's coming. Ooh. I had it in the queue. We were about ready to get going on it. And then all this happened. Gourmet so. tater tots. Oh, yeah. Very they're, nice. They're I was in the market last night, Whole Foods, and saw, um, uh, you know, all the plant-based foods. So I'm a vegetarian. But anyway, I saw tater tots made out of kale. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to give it a yeah. shot. <laughs> you have to, right? You have to. Yeah, I have mean, to. You know, um, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. I have not seen those, that product yet, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll probably stick with the old school Oritas, you know? Like oh, I've got some Oritas in the freezer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good you stuff. can't go wrong there. So you're growing up at 16. Are you, what are you drinking? Are you drinking? Milwaukee light. I'm drinking whiskey. You- yeah, Natty Light and whiskey out in the coolies with the keggers on the Friday and Saturday nights. Um, yeah. You know, running from the cops when they show up and bouncing yep. off barbed wire fences in the middle of the night because you just were sprinting from them and just throwing you didn't that shit out it. the window. I've got yep. yeah, I've got cuts all over my body from that. So, <laughs> you know, I was a bit of a rebel kid for sure. Did you um, cow tip? It's, you know what? That's so con- overrated. Uh, yeah, hey, I grew up in Ohio, and I'm not gonna lie, we did a little cow tipping. You, you, so. you, I mean, it was talked about, but I can't say that I ever actually um, cued in on that. You know what we used to do? Uh, I mean, lots of things. Some I'll share, some I won't. <laughs> but um, we used to go at lunch. This is back in the day where you could have, you know, your gun racks in the back of your truck or whatever. Yeah. And you would have loaded 20 gauges. And at lunch, you would leave and you would go slap ducks for 20, mm. 30 minutes, shoot some ducks down in the, the coolies and whatnot, and then head back to school and, yeah. you know, hit your. You were one of those guys. You know, I, I really wasn't. I was usually. Um, just breaking out I would go with because it would yeah. be sneaking okay. out of high school and you'd do other things when you snuck out of high Any school. Any reason so. to sneak out of high school? Yeah, exactly. I have to shoot something? All right, that's all right. I'm going. <laughs> just get yeah, me out. It was, uh, I, think the, I think seventh grade through 12th grade was like 380 kids in the whole school. So you knew everybody. It was one yeah. of those little small town things. I had 69 in my graduating class. 66. 66. Yeah, I can relate. So all right. So that's what you're drinking at 16. So speaking of whiskey, you just made me think of something, you know, whiskey and a lot of celebrities getting behind some of this stuff. It seems to be pretty popular. What What's going on there? What What do you see? Is that cut into the wine business? Yeah, you don't really I mean, see it's... celebrities behind wines, I don't think. You know, you really don't. I mean, you've got you've got some. I mean, you've got. I think Dwayne Wade's in it. Pink's doing some stuff. There's okay. some sports people that are into it. You know, uh, the sports community is really getting into wine. Um, but you are seeing this diversification. We just did a really neat project with um, Hill Rock Distillery out of the Hudson Valley up in New York. Fantastic, world class. I mean, the stuff they're making is just lights out delicious and one of the cool things was is they took some of our old cabernet barrels and they distilled the whiskey and aged it in um dakota shy oak barrels so we have this hill rock in dakota shy wine barrel solera whiskey that we have that was cool so you're seeing that sort is way of cool crossover. okay um, i am seeing i mean whiskey's coming back it's it is. um it's really coming back for me growing up where i grew up we drink a lot of it, and I have I have very few rules. The but cheap one of them stuff. Is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them is no brown liquor. Brown liquor gets me owly and gets me chirping a little bit more, and it might just you know let me say break out the whiskey or in my head. Uh huh. You know, so I learned in in a couple of um, poor execution nights drinking the stuff that it's just it's just not my friend. So I don't drink too much whiskey anymore. I'll okay. sip maybe some really good stuff here and there but if for the most part I'm a Negroni man and um uh, and uh wine guy so yeah, wine do guy. you I saw a little bit about you um on on your website I was uh, reading your letter which was extremely thoughtful um just sort of a state of the union uh you know your thoughts on corona and uh you mentioned you were going to San Sebastian I also had a trip planned to San Sebastian in July 
So I'm with you. I was going to go hike the Camino de Santiago after. Yeah. yeah. So, bummer. so get this. Get yeah. this. When I was walking over to do this interview, I, I looked down and I'd be like, you know what? I would be eating clams and drinking <laughs> Verdejo in Lisbon right now. So I, my flight would have been yesterday to Lisbon. We were going to Lisbon uh. first. And then we we're going to spend some time three days in Lisbon and then to San Sebastian. And and this was a, a, a auction thing that we had purchased. Um, there's a tremendous charity in, in Southwest Florida called Destin Charity Wine Festival. Ah, and uh -huh. for years I've been going and it's all children based and it, it's just phenomenal what they do for, for kids in that area. And in particular, there was, um, there's a school for autistic and, and Downs uh, syndrome kids. And I have a niece who has Downs. And so each year there's a package that's tied to this particular charity. And so it was just, it made sense. I had always wanted to go to San Sebastian. And so when we purchased it, we were going with just this cool group of people. And it was a real, real drag when, um, oh. when it all kind of came and it got canceled. So, Total and bummer. now I'm fighting with Air Portugal. They're trying to tell me that I get a credit. And I, and I said to them, well, it's illegal. You can't cancel my flight. That's so um, funny. And not the get my money back. Yeah, the CEO of United was on Squawk Box this morning, and some and they were they brought that up to him, that what's up yeah. with the vouchers versus the refunds, and he was like, oh no 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 no, you know, you get a yeah. refund, you get a full refund. I mean, we'll, well offer I, you a voucher. Was that Oscar or was it Scott? Which gentleman did they interview this? Oh, morning? actually, you know what? It wasn't CEO. It, it was the um, communications director. Was his title. okay. He was so, out of Chicago. Um, yeah, there's, um, I think the incoming uh, CEO, um, fantastic guy, it happens to be a Dakota Shy um, wine drinker. Ah, uh, no way. And I happen to love- You're getting a I mean, refund. Yeah, I hope so, man. <laughs> but you know what I really want is like global status, but I doubt that's going to happen. You gotta totally. Much. How much wine um, will it take But I got to tell you, he's a, he's, he's a sharp guy and a, and a really on point guy. And I think that what they're dealing with right now is- it's so important to understand because our business is so much a direct to consumer business. So we yeah. need people from the United States in America, to come out to Napa and the unknowns that we're faced with right now is when does that, you know, hopefully we forget quickly, but I don't think you're going to forget about this one. This one is instilled in the American consumer and our economy is 75% consumption. So how does that tie in? And, um, those are, those are some headwinds and some worrying things that we look at. So I pay great attention to, and I love Squawk Box, by the way. Oh we've been gosh. trying, to, we've been throwing things out there to try and get on that damn show for two years to Seriously? tell the story about yeah. American entrepreneurship. Totally. Um, I got to expect that many people that watch that drink wine. So yes. There's some Dakota shot. Right now they're drinking Squat it while they watch it. But yes. If you're listening, come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> well, I could watch Kramer all day long, honestly. Oh, uh, I love the guy, man. And you know, he got panned for years during the recession, and the guy's been calling it straight. I, I think he's great. I think he's great for um for America. I, I, I like Jim Kramer a lot. Well, the past 48 hours, he has been touting the Beyond Meat stock, which I bought way too high. And so <laughs> I'm like, let's go. <laughs> He has some misses for sure. He does. Sure. Let's hope this isn't one, but yes. All right. So 16, you're drinking some cheap whiskey and at 18, 19, you head to California. Yeah. At 18, 19, I went, I went to college for two years at uh, North Dakota State University. Um, followed a high school sweetheart out there who, you know, I was, there's always I a girl. Dated. There's always a girl. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was uh, the captain of the wrestling team. She was the captain of the basketball team. She was a year older than me and from a rivaling town that was eight miles away, but ended up coming to that high school for a year. And just, you know, your first love and yeah. you, chase, you chase what um, what you think is going to be the forever. And, and then you get into the real world, you figure out that doesn't work. And, you know, this just really isn't for me and life's going by and if I stick around yeah. um, you know I'm gonna end up you know I, I don't know it's just not the journey that I wanted and so totally. I had a friend who was living in Oregon um, high school buddy and said listen man you can hit the sofa so I took what I had I think it was like 
1600 bucks. It was a gray Jansport backpack. I'll never forget it because <laughs> I told this story to the <laughs> CEO great. of Jansport. And oh, he, you did? Um, That's a good he, way. I, yeah. I hosted him um, one time and he sent me uh, he sent me some really cool stuff, but he was like, that was a great story. I'll, I'll never forget it. And a little black duffel bag. And I think I had $1,400 in my pocket. And so I took the Amtrak train from Minot all the way to Portland and then a Greyhound bus that probably stopped 62 times from <laughs> Portland to Eugene, which is like Not the an most hour efficient and 45 way to minutes travel. drive, right? Yes. And then got to the bus station and then hopped a couple buses and ended up at uh, my buddy's place. And that's how I got to Eugene. And, um, and so that was beer. Beer was that, that what was you were beer drinking at that, that time. That was beer and other things, but yeah. Craft beer. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I'll go wherever you want to go with this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are you rolling something over there? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, we'll no not wine. at the winery. We're yeah. regulated federally. We don't play in that space. Okay, nope. good. And so at what point do you taste wine? I mean, you know, I've seen plenty of people taste wine for the first time, 18, 16, 18, 20. And, you know, the reaction's not always, well, that's smooth and lovely, you know. Right. When do you, you know, taste think- wine and say, I like wine? Oh, you know, I think it comes with, I, I don't, I, I can't really answer that. I think for me, I think you like it more when you feel like you've understood something like, oh, okay, I, agree. I get that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how do we demystify wine for the younger people that are coming into it? And again, like if it, if it's good, it's good. And, and there are no core rules with it. But I think for me was always like, I need to understand what's happening in my palate. And I had a, I had fantastic mentors you really early did. in my career. I worked with some of the absolute, literally the best in the world, the best of the best. I mean, Heidi Barrett obviously was iconic at the peak of her career <laughs> when I started having the opportunity to rub elbows with her. Tom Garrett, uh, our winemaker, my business partner, my best friend in the world, you know, was her, her assistant winemaker for a decade. So, just unbelievable um, mentors in the business. And so for me, it was the one thing that I always took away from Heidi was the deduction of what's happening in the palate. Mm. Okay, back here behind your ears, those are your parotid glands. They're your salivary glands, all right? And then you've got tannins, and they identify different parts of the palate, some on the lips, the cheeks, and the gums, some on top of the tongue. Understand that. So understand these three places. When you sip the wine, Think of tannins, right? Tannins are these sort of, they're, I always call tannins like the ligaments and the tendons, right? I always call the acidity the backbone, all right? And the muscle, that's the the fruit. We want to flex the muscle. That's the sexy part. We want to show the fruit. And, And this is oversimplifying it or generalizing it, but the acidity becomes the backbone. The tannins hold it together and the muscle is the fruit. So what you ultimately want to do is be able to say, mm, I like the way that feels, or I don't like the way that feels. Why don't I like the way that feels? Or why do I like the way that feels? And understanding that in the tannin is all that flavor, all that phenolic compound. And so think of tannins as like these missiles that come in and on the tail end of them is all the goodness and they stick mm. and they squeeze. And what happens is without the acidity in the wine, the pop back here, What happens is it creates this sort of saliva wave. It's this wave that rushes back to shore, keeps coming. So it's the saliva push that goes across your palate. And what that saliva does is it picks up all those tannins that are stuck in and around there. And in those tannins is that flavor. And so 30, 40, 50 seconds after the initial sip and swallow, what you have is this still sort of penetrating, pulsating flavor going on in your mouth. And that's the finish of a wine. And that's really how we sort of separate the good from the great wines. But being able to like, instead of talk about it in big words yeah. and understand here, here, and here, and then drink it and go, hey, you know what? That's really happening. I get that. That was a really good foundation for me to then get into the more you know nuanced detailing of, of tasting. You're wine. right. It, and it gives you an appreciation. You're, you're experiencing it maybe from all levels, not mm-hmm. so elementary like all right, I'll try some wine. It's a different, it's more of a, almost a sensual experience. Let's deduce this together and let's find what makes it unique. And so, yeah. and then what happens is like, 
wow, that is really puckering on the tongue. Okay, that's oak. So oak tannin needs to match fruit tannin. Okay, so if oak tannin needs to match the intensity of the fruit tannin, excuse me, so the fruit tannin is, in, is intense and I'm tasting a lot of oak. So I know that there was a heavy dose of oak on this wine. This is again generalized. This is not, I, wanna, I don't wanna get called out by any other wine people in the world saying, now what are you, what's he talking about? Right. But this is, when you see heavy oak, you can tend to think that there's heavy fruit tannin, okay? They just, the fruit tannin needs to link with the oak tannin to create these chains to balance themselves. So if I pick up a lot of oak- They need to be can, equal, you're saying? Yeah, in a way, yeah. I mean, they build okay. these, these compounding chains. And so what, what happens is, what you can come to is like, okay, big, powerful fruit tannin. All right, well, if it's big and powerful fruit tannin, it probably came from up on the hill, right? Because the valley floor, it's easier and softer, silkier tannins typically. So if there's a lot of oak, that means we know we needed to match the oak to the fruit tannin. That means that if there's heavy fruit tannin, I can deduce that it's probably from elevation and not from valley floor. And when things like that start to click and then you reveal the wine, because I always taste blind, and you reveal the wine, you're like, yeah, okay, right. now I got this. This is humming. And that becomes um, passion. And then it, it sets the hook. And from there, look, you're always going to be going this way because there's no ceiling in the world of wine. So yeah. run amongst the best, never be the best. That's a right. philosophy we always talk about. Well, that's the thing. That's why the tasting is so almost necessary you know I, I guess I always had a, a feeling growing up from Ohio parents did not drink wine Coors Light mm -hmm. my dad would have a Coors Light at night maybe two I don't know yeah. but right I mean that's we were drinking Bud Light you know driving around in cars cow tipping and whatnot so no no yeah. wine was introduced to me and when I I mean it took me years to go to Napa I've traveled all over the world hadn't been to Napa uh, until a year ago. I, I had this notion that wine tastings were very elitist and that there was some expectation that I was supposed to walk in the room and be able to identify the oak and yeah. how much tannins there were and whatever. And I, I thought, holy shit, this is not going to go well. Um, so I kind of, you know, the way you're describing it is a, a cool, sensual, different kind of experience experience with you know almost history and and meaning behind so it much. versus some arrogant kind of situation called a tasting yeah and i hope i and i hope you didn't experience any of that in that but i think um that it, it occurs on occasion certainly uh, it's inevitable in any in any part of the world or anything that you do but one of the great, great things of, of Napa Valley is just the, the unbelievable history. And I am a student of history. And so, you know, there are so many pioneers that paved the way before Dakota Shy shows up to be able to get to like live this amazing opportunity, this amazing dream. And we're, we're, we're very grateful for that history and that students and, and, and being a student of history. And then, you know, Napa is, it's, it's the global Disneyland, I mean, for grownups. It's, it's a global destination. And so there are pockets that you'll find, but I think overall this community is one of the, the single best in the world as far as the, everybody rises together. And, and the amount of sharing both in the winemaking side of things and just the cultural side of like making Napa the best is unlike anything in the world, I think. You don't see this type of collaboration over in Europe or in, really anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And Sonoma does a great job too. And all of California does a great job. But um, I think what it comes down to is we are farmers. And anybody who forgets that you're farmers first, yes. then you know, they're starting to drink that Kool-Aid a little too much. But right. we very, very, very much, um, that's who we are. That's what we stick to. That's what we know. Uh, and we, again, we try to stay as humble as we can and, and pursuing, um, you know, we want to be one of the greats out here. We want to chase a legacy, okay? Yeah. So Dakota Shy just got done with its, really its first decade in the industry. The word legacy shouldn't even roll off your tongue unless you've been in the business 30 years. 
So we have great respect and admiration for that. And that's our goal. That's our pursuit. And that means we're 20 years out. So what do you do for the next 10 years? You set the table to be able to chase that next, that 30 year mark. And so arrogance and that type like? of stuff. And you know, where's Dakota shy in, in 10, 15 years? I mean, obviously you, you can't speak without addressing the obvious of, of the situation we're in, which, you know, this too shall pass. Um, like you said, certain yeah. things will, will always uh, be different, but I think I'm hoping at least that it'll be the positive things that come out of this. Um, yeah. So where, I, you know, where's Dakota shy in 10, 15 years? I, you know, I think, um, you know, you can hope or you plan. I'm a planner. I don't hope. I'm a planner. Um, we yeah. plan. So uh, the way we operate is where we'll be. This is an incubator of opportunity. First off, I want this to be a platform for young people that come here that don't have money, that don't have, you know, hey, you know what? Why don't you go stay busy, sweetheart? We'll we'll get you set up with this little property over here, and you can play winemaker and, <laughs> and all that stuff. Right. Um, so. For us, like, you know, we've got kids from Western Pennsylvania, from Kentucky, from Ohio, um, from Mississippi, from North Dakota. This is a collection of hungry people who want to pursue a passion in life. And I was lucky. I was lucky. I worked my tail off, but no matter what, I had great people help me. Um, I got to throw a plug out to Jeff Smith of Hourglass Winery, a gentleman who gave me an opportunity unlike anyone would ever really do in the Napa Valley, let me make wine at his winery. Let me run his tasting room. And the deal was, if I brought somebody into the tasting room, I could have 10 minutes at the end of the tasting and talk about Dakota Shy. If that set the hook, I could sell Dakota Shy to them. So the way I was able to build a Incredible. winery from nothing, literally. I mean, when I tell you we came here we shoveled the sand, we mixed the mixed, we started the, the, the urn and we baked the bricks. And then each brick we built piece by piece by piece. There was nothing that was given to us in this process. The brand was started with tip money and, and scrubbing barrels for five years. The only reason I got the fruit was because I used to wait on one of the guys who was a rock star grower here. And he was a farm kid who grew up in orchards, and, and, and apples and, and, and walnuts and stuff. And so we would share war stories of working on the farm. This dude had, you know, seven, 800 acres of Napa Valley vineyards. But, you know, if you go back to his family lineage, this was like, a, this was pure ag. It wasn't wealthy people living here. But as his family, you know, it, 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 he became the patriarch of the family. And with that became the owner of all this land. And so he would put me in a vineyard that was almost untouchable like the best winemakers couldn't access some of it sometimes but here's this kid from north dakota who waits tables at martini house that somehow got two rows of this block in this vineyard and people are going what the hell how did this happen no kidding and that was you know um i digress a little bit on the, the point we were talking about but that was such a um a big reason as to how we got started and so for dakota shy um this is a place where you come and we expect that you get so good at what you do that we can't, we can't afford you anymore. Like you're going to go on and kick ass. And the when plan you is that, for you to go kick ass. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like don't show up and collect a paycheck here. You show yep. up to get better than us and then you go and, and you create. And when that happens, what happens is there's a, a honeymoon period for wineries and then there's, there's a strength period and then there's this legacy period, right? Look, our honeymoon's going to come and it's going to go, and there's going to be a new hot, young, up and coming, into you know, superstar winemaker, winery. Da da da. Not saying that that's what Dakota Shy is, you know, respectfully, but there's going to be. That's there's gonna always come, somebody gonna nipping at your tail. Sure. Yeah, and so why not have that come from our camp rather than not? Like we want to develop successful young. Uh, men and women and let them chase dreams. Everybody has the right to do that. And, you know, we bottled up the American dream. My American dream is inside the bottle of Dakota Shy. When you pull the cork and drink it, we want it to evoke emotions and thought processes that, that get you going on what your pursuits and dreams are. And when you do that, you take wine and it elevates itself above beverage, above industry, above all things. And it becomes this currency of life. And when that happens, that's magic. Special. Yeah, that's magic. 
And that's, yeah. that's, that doesn't need a college that's what degree. We want. Yeah. No, it does not. Yeah. No, it does not. Hey, uh, where did Dakota Shy get the name? You know, it's a culmination of stuff. All, I, my buddies used to call me Dakota. Uh, when I moved to Oregon, you know, small town kid, you're like everybody's first, right? They never met anybody <laughs> from North Dakota. So, um, and I was, look, I was, uh, I was never a timid kid, but you go to a, a small town a school of 20,000 people, um, you, you, you listen a little bit more and you observe. But what it means to me um, is strength and humility, okay? Mm, Dakota, mm -hmm. where I grew up, you grew up, you live in an inhospitable place and you work your ass off and there's really no, no two ways around it. You're just, a, you're cut from a cloth that's, that's tough. Um, yeah. You have to be, you have to be. And so there was strength there. I knew the work ethic and the strength there. The shy was really kind of a cover for doubt. Do I belong here? Mm. You know, I would come out and I would, I would be here and this was just such a different world. And, you know, I'd, I'd make 300 bucks a night waiting tables. And that's what a mortgage payment was back in North Dakota. And like, I just didn't know if I belonged. And so strength and humility was balance. And yeah. the way that we would approach it would be that way. So that's really the, the name is what it means today how it started was it was a nickname. Um, my buddies called me Dakota. One of their girlfriends would always introduce me as their shy friend, Todd from North Dakota, Dakota <laughs> DS, Dakota. Shy. I, I rolled it into a little bit more poetic philosophical meaning than, than just a drunky IPA. I know. like it. I'm thinking of all the other names you could have been called as a farm boy from North Dakota. So yeah, I'm sure there were a few <laughs> that I didn't hear, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did good on that one. So do you see Dakota becoming, you know, everything's turning into a lifestyle brand these days? I mean, I love the incubator idea. You see it happening in, in music and, and other industries, creative industries, uh, for sure. Uh, lifestyle brand, you know, will we yeah, see Dakota you know, candles so and cookbooks? And You know, uh, it's so funny. We, we, st we, we stopped using the word lifestyle, I think, a while ago. We were using it seven, eight, ten years ago. I swear to you, like You're when so I started California. this company, I swear to you, when I started this company, it was like, um, if they, what's Dakota shy? I always used to tell them it's a way of life, you know? Yeah. And so we were a lifestyle Which brand is a before lifestyle. it was ever really used. Yeah. yeah it, you know? Uh, but now it's, um, what, what is Dakota? What is Dakota shy? I mean, I mean, will the brand expand? I mean, do you want to make more wine? Do you want to help other people make more wine? Do you want to expand your product line? I think what I want to do is I want to do one thing exceptionally well, and that mm -hmm. is Dakota Shy. I don't want to do five things decently well. I want, I want this to have the legs to go after I'm gone. I want it to be generational. So I think that it's, it's ceiling is somewhat in, and I think what I would like to do after that is – is support and see um, young up and coming winemakers and ideas and things like yeah. that and, and help create that way and maybe look at, at, at doing other things uh, in the space. But as far as Dakota Shy is concerned, um, what makes it special is that it is limited. There isn't a lot of it. We work with the best vineyards in the world as it relates to Cabernet. And from that, we're just going to keep it as such and, and make it that more, that much more special. And Focus then in the interim, the well, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that we are adamant about here is you give me five years of loyalty, which is you're going to come in here. You're going to get trained up by one of the, in my opinion, best winemakers in the country. You're going to work in an environment with some of the best equipment, the best tools. You are going to get shopped in three to four years time. And somebody's going to say, hey, you want to be a winemaker, assistant winemaker? Or, hey, seller master, do you want to get an opportunity to come over here and be an assistant winemaker and here's 30,000 more dollars per year. All right. Well, listen, you guys are going to have to decide if that's the direction you want to go because here at Dakota shy after five years, we'll finance, you know, up to four barrels. We'll pay for it all. Ah. You're basically going to get an opportunity to create your own brand yeah. so that when it is time to leave, you go out into the world and you have something that's yours. This is mm -hmm. yours. You built it, you made it. And I think, for me, that was I, my biggest dream always was having my own business, my own company. I was totally. a five-year-old kid who used to take his cousins on school summer break and say, okay, well, we're going to do lemonade stands. 
and you guys sit on this corner and you guys sit on this corner <laughs> and I'll get the wagon and I'll come yeah. refill the lemonade yeah. and redistribute the cookies and collect the money, right? Yeah. So like those types of things have always been pumping in my head. And I think that um, it's exciting to watch people succeed and kind of create ah. something from nothing. So that's, that's the best that's where part, our focus isn't it? Will be. Well, when you're giving so. back, I mean, life is about gratitude, right? And so you're the giving tooth. back. I'm about whole... to get it marked on my wrist. I know. Yeah. I never got a tattoo, but that would be the one I would get. Um, the Latin but, you know, of gratitude. You're giving back. That's what you. That's why you said you're where you are, and um, and that what no better way? Uh, you know, um, uh, you can call it what you will. I'll call it God, but. Yeah, there, I, he watches those things, and I always say it's like the whispers of others that no one else hears are the things that'll stamp the ticket to where you're going. And so, totally. do the right stuff, and 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 do it for the right reasons. You know, this is not something. I mean, I don't usually talk about this. I'll mention it in the tasting room, but something that's live or I've never really talked about it before. But yeah, it's important now more so than ever. I mean, my entire staff is full healthcare paid nobody's been furloughed we're you know we've got awesome. families and teams that were you know and it's, awesome. it's a challenge but totally um we're in a position to be able to do it and um that we owe it and i know and i know god karma spirits energy the universe whatever, whatever anybody wants to call it yeah for me it's god but um i i know that that compounds into something it has it's put me here and i'm not going to fight against any of that so i'm going to continue to do what i do yeah. you know in college uh, this is the best part in college they would say in in you know economics professor at you know harvard mba would be like that's not the way you run a business that's not the way you run a business well, you oh know no what? heart no heart in the business yeah yeah well no I, I don't know that they would say it like that way but like the way that my my team has a little bit of skin in the company, right? Like yeah. I believe that if you got skin in the company, you'll bleed for the You'll work harder. Right? Yep. For sure. Um, Todd, you're too generous. Todd, you give too much away. You don't that's not industry standard. You shouldn't be paying that much, this, that, or the other. If I went to those schools, I wouldn't have what I have today because I would be needling and diamond looking at Excel spreadsheets, shit that I cannot stand yeah. doing. Totally. And and nickel and diamond it where this is like you can't monetize what we're doing right now, but I know it'll pay dividends far greater than some bullshit return on the bottom line. Totally. Yeah. You'd be running a, a business um, and, and not uh, further in a cause, you know, and you just, it's yours, yours is deeper and it is why, what makes you different. I mean, you as a person, um, as the leader um, and also the brand. So that's awesome. Oh, Awesome. Well, I, I, I don't know how long you want to go. I, I was, I, I'm trying to be sensitive to Austin's like, I, how long is she going to ask? Don't, don't worry about it. I mean, listen, I've got a whole lot of nothing to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? That's not true. What, how creative have you gotten? And is the community getting together? You know, in New York, you, you see know, some pretty incredible things going on with chefs. Yeah. And, I've got to, I got to throw it out to my team who I think are just, um, they're unbelievable. Like Austin has really pushed for this Zoom virtual tasting stuff. So we've done some yeah. Zoom tastings. Yeah. We're going to do a cooking class with a company out of San Francisco. Uh, what's the name? The Truffle Shuffle, which is a great name. So Fun. we're yeah. going to do some, some cooking kits. Um, I'm doing virtual tastings across the country. So we're evolving. I mean, it's not, our, it's not my favorite thing to do, but you got to yeah. do it, you know? So. Well, everything you do is reservation only and the people that come in are in small groups and they know each other anyway. So when California opens up, it sounds like you guys are a couple weeks away from steps at, at doing that. Uh, I'm in Florida and Floridians and Texans are just like, woohoo. I mean, our malls are open, restaurants are open, masks are Great optional. It's, it's, wow. Yeah. It's a good time. Um, I think but, we just got our sporting goods stores and our bookstores open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend lives, lives in uh, Del Mar and, and she said, we can go to the flower shop. I'm like, Who yeah, that's yeah. The hell wants um, flowers right now, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, you know what? I have a, I have a gorgeous estate that we're on. It's, it's a very, 
beautiful property. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's better than, you know, I always say better than some, not as good as others. You know, you play your cards, you, you play your hand out and uh, you get the deck reshuffled and get a better hand. Yeah. So I always think I have better than, right than the next guy. So um, when it opens back up, I mean, are there safety and things that you need to do differently besides a lot more Clorox? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we've got some hand sanitizer stations on order that, that we're bringing in. We've got some protocols that we've worked through. We've talked with, uh, you know, our, our lawyers and just say, you know, what's, you know, how do we protect ourselves? This is, you know, it's a so yes. happy world. There's a bunch of parasites out there that'll come. And that would be the negative you know, of being in California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're looking at protecting ourselves and just making sure that we have, you know, we're up to date with what the, the state um, guidelines are and, and things like that. And I think we are, we're close. We don't, we don't really know everything yet. So until we do, um, we'll just basically be aggressive and proactive on our end um, to do that. It's concerning. I, I mean, look, they might open it up, but who's, who's hopping on the airplanes just to fly out yeah. here? I think it'll be... I think we'll limp through 2020. I mean, I really do. I hope yeah. that we get a nice boost in September, October. I hope some things really die down. Yeah. Uh, and we'll focus on the Bay Area, you know, people that can drive to totally. Napa in an hour and a half. and Maybe you know, don't have uh, to stay in a hotel. Uh, hotels exactly. are a big question. Or I don't. That's that. It, honestly, I think it's hotels more so than it will be airplanes. I mean, initially it'll be airplanes, but then it'll be like, well, who stayed in the in the room the night before and what are the cleaning practices did they yeah i mean so th that's a, that's a terrifying reality it is one thing now that you have a lot of boutique hotels so it's almost like there's a, a little super more nice hotels trust yeah. around the boutique hotels i mean i saw the marriott ceo talk about what they're doing and it's crazy the expense and how they have to change everything but they have no choice. Um, I think we're all going to be cleaning our own hotel rooms for yeah, sure. We are fortunate. We have a <laughs> tremendous hotel industry in the Napa Valley and they are really some of the best in the world. So I'm confident in every bit that those, you know, people who are coming and staying at the hotels in Napa are going to be, it's, it's going to be the top 1% of cleanliness and execution on that front for the yeah. country when they come here so have you seen your your uh i think you call it the shy society your yeah. mail order pick up i mean drinking is up there's there's a headline for you yeah so you know the the tastings are great but how do you expand expand that you know i think you, some revenue? You, you hope that people consume more, like you said. So you, you kind of, in, in our world, we sell a luxury good. We sell a luxury good to a density, you know, a good proportion of our base has set luxury good. So yes. they don't necessarily need to buy on that email because they already have it. So when you try to look at glass half full versus half empty, you're, you're depleting some of your inventory, which is yes. good. So our shy society is sort of that once a year, um, shipment to our members that gives them access to the property to the single vineyard wines the the hard to get stuff really just a lot of unique i don't want to say perks because it's 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 got more substance and soul to that but what we've seen is um we've been adding value to an already great value which is you know purchase six bottles of napa cabernet get six bottles of rosé cabernet so mm. we want to give you something more i don't discount we don't believe in discounting we already feel that we're priced at a discount relative to our peers but people like to see value ads and so we've been playing with that and it's been working well um, but in the end, we need, we need the economy back up and opening and we need people coming here to sustain it. So a high percentage of your sales come at the point of tasting. They do, which then carries over to reoccurring orders. Um, you know, we have great loyalty to brand, but there's always attrition. And so that attrition is going to keep stacking and without the tasting room, we're flatlining here and we're dripping down here. So how long can we sustain that? I will say that the base has been extraordinary unbelievably loyal and just ultra supportive on what we've done and so we're in a better place i think than some um but again um how long does that sustain itself do you I keep really hope... production going at the rate of corona then 
Uh, we, we have made um, contingency plans A, B, and C this year for cuts on production. So we mm -hmm. are certainly going to cut production um, this year relative to what we've done the last couple of years. Sure. Uh, we'll have a better feeling for it in September. And if it still doesn't look real pretty, uh, we'll go to contingency C, which is, you know, the bare bone minimums to the people that we've worked with since the beginning in the vineyards, people that we're under contract with. Um, and we'll, we'll make a very little bit amount of wine to sort of have a vintage and, and work through it and pray to God that, you know, come, yeah. come 2021, it, it softens up a little bit. Sure. Well, you know, you're looking at medicines and, and vaccines and, and so forth, I think. It sounds promising. It does vaccines, sound promising. You know. I mean, I'm a glass half full, but yeah, there's... As am I. They're all, they're all racing. I mean, there's some money to be made there on that Ooh, too. Baby. So uh, I think that's going to happen sooner than we think. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you about, how many tastings on, in your biggest month do you do a day? Well, unfortunately, we are um, by county, um, by, by our permit, our, our marketing campaign, if you would, what our permit allows us to do, how many I could do versus how many I do do is, is a different story. So we're ah. able to see roughly 100 and I think the number is 120 people per week. So if you look at that as, let's say, seven days a week, um, and, and, you know, some days you don't have a tasting two, three days in a row. It's just, it depends what time of year it is, but we could do, you know, a couple of two couples, which would be a four top one couple, which would be a deuce. And then, you know, three couples. So you're looking at 12 people a day, 12 to 20 people a day, ideally is what we do. I could probably double that, but, um, you know, unfortunately the size of our property, dictated by um our marketing program just doesn't allow that what so, is what's the the philosophy behind the the cap uh it's a contentious point um we uh is it, that it, about alcohol consumption no it's about no. roadway um it's, it's about septic and sewer and flushing you know how many flushes of a toilet how much water is used per this space, how big is your leach field to absorb that many flushes? It, really? It's, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, um, you know, how, how big is the space? What road is it on? Does it congest traffic and require this, this, and this? I mean, ours is pretty simple. Um, unfortunately, we have to go through the same exact things as the Mondavis of the world. Oh, it doesn't matter the size. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, we're we're looped in. <laughs> um, I mean, our tiny little space pays. Man, can a guy as... get a break? Jeez, we're trying out here. We thought maybe Seriously. something was happening before uh, all this went down, but now <laughs> everything is completely boxed up. Okay, so I know you want tastings to come back and you want everybody there, but you got to have a story of somebody mm -hmm. who um, could have been a one and done and. Just don't ever need to see that person again. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I like mean, I just, I just picture what you go through. Well, from, from what we talked about with the elitism, you got to have that arrogant guy that you just want to pop, give him a little Dakota pop. You know, you know, you got to have something. You know what's fun is, um, so look, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't had a haircut in like two and a half months, so I had to wear a baseball cap today. I figured. Um, I'm on to you. But I'm cash, right? Yeah. I'm a <laughs> I cash like it. Guy. I mean, like, I like it. So I'll come in and I'll do these tastings, and you'll get some hot shots coming in, and you know, they're doing well. They're making money and on the East Coast, and you know, maybe it's finance. I don't know what it is. I mean, they're from all over the world, so yeah. it's not just East Coast specific, <laughs> but it's the ones that I, I love playing with them because. Usually it's the ones that come in alpha dog, you know, big totally. swing in. Da, 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 yeah. Da. And, you know, I'm just the guy working here. You know, I'm, I, I don't, I don't say I'm Dakota shy. I don't tell them. This you don't wear owner. I come in and, no, no, no. <laughs> and so what'll happen is, you know, they'll be telling me how great they are, how great they are, you know, and just whatever it be. And I just let them walk themselves into the corner because one of two things is going to happen eventually the light bulb is going to go off and they're going to go, Oh wait, so this is yours. And I'll be like, yeah. Uh -huh. And then it's like, 
all right, homie, here's what we got. We got two options. You can walk, you can buy a shitload of wine because you're a big superstar. And, and then, then I'm going to believe you and you're swinging. Yeah. And, that, and that's great. Or, yeah. or you can tuck your tail and walk like a schmuck out of this tasting room, limping through with two bottles or whatever it is, knowing, because I know when you go to bed at night, that's, I'm going to be running through your head going, God, I really made an ass of myself talking about oh, like this. this shit. So you so like I the New Yorkers. I, oh, I love you New York. First New York. of all, New York is fantastic. <laughs> it's not just specific to New York. I mean, you'll see it in middle America. You'll see it in Southern California. You'll see it in the Bay Area. So you see yeah, that I'm kidding. across the board. Yeah. Um, but some of the finance big boys out there, you know, because people my age now, for so many years, I was the youngest person in the room. I'd started hosting tastings at 25. And look, you want to talk about a college degree, hang out with the ultra successful humans in the United States and really the world. You get 90 minutes with them seven days a week, five totally. times a day. And yeah. all I did was host uber successful people, people that you see on Squawk Box, people right. that are CEOs of Fortune 50 companies. And so you spend enough time with them and uh, you feel like you can run with them. You don't necessarily yeah. need that degree to be there. Yeah. There's some smart people though, for sure. Okay, so you don't miss them. And does do you have like cars waiting for certain people that forget how to walk? Like, I mean, yeah, we try the to stay away from that. Alcohol consumption does have to happen, right? I mean, yeah, we're lucky. Fortunately, most people use a car service out here. Um, generally speaking, just because yeah. look, for, it's you're going a to country, five right? wineries like, a day, and it's yeah, yeah. If you have no business driving. Secondly. The, you, you don't know how to get to some of these. These are, this is are true. you know, these are hard to find spots sometimes. Thirdly, the wife, the service out here, you miss a turn. You don't get good service because you're out in the country. Yep, you don't know you're where lost. you're going. It's just a shit show if you don't, if you don't take a car service. Yep. We, we push people to please take car services. And I love Uber when I'm in an urban space and setting, but God, do we build out there. offers with them out here because they don't have a clue where they're going. They miss turns. They get people late. You've got people that are waiting for Ubers and your next groups are coming. It's just yes. an absolute shit show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That, that's a, that's, that's a key. That's fair enough. Yeah, know. shit show yeah. works. So yeah. if we want to get the millennials, do you see many millennials? We're starting to. Yeah, we're starting to. Yeah. You know, I is think it, what they want... Go ahead, please. Yeah, I was just going to say, is, is that about you know, a millennial with money? Is that about exposure to wine? To even knowing that that's a trip I could go take? What is that? You know, we're, tr we're still trying to master that. We don't, we don't yet know. I think, um, obviously you have a ton of millennials that are doing very well in the Bay Area. Yeah. I think the, the, the thing is, millennials are looking at what their parents did that's the uncool part. Okay. So yeah. Napa Cabernet for a lot of years was the benchmark. So now you've got these crazy, you know, low alcohol, high acid wines that are delicious that I have nothing against, but like, it's almost what was in is now the uncool thing. So that can be a challenge. I see a lot more millennials in the Sonoma side, which is, if you come across the bridge, you're going to get to Sonoma first before you get to Napa. So mm. we have some competition with yeah. Sonoma, they're doing the right things over there. They're, they're, um, they're catering to that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're seeing a really strong uptick in our millennial. Um, well, you know, they <laughs> want an experience. Like you said, they don't want what their parents had. Um, I don't think that means they don't want wine. I think they just want an experience. So I come back to that whole, you have an opportunity because, I mean, I'm talking to you because out of the 15 I visited, you were the one that was unique. Thank you. Um, I'm, to I'm me. Flattered. So you're the only one I wanted to come back and talk to. So I think that um, that's what they want. Yeah. Um, and we think so too. And we think that, look, again, the who, the how, the why, what's inside the bottle, that has soul. That has actual true substance in it. It means something. And that we know is what they want. Yeah. And we just want to get them here, have them experience it, have them see the product for what it is. Um, and yeah, we have, we're confident about it. I would like to see more of it. I think Sonoma has done a tremendous job at marketing to those yeah. uh, millennials there. Uh, but again, we have some really talented millennial people on staff and that helps too. 
I'm going to. They can speak you know, that I language. I know what I know. I know what I know. And I know it's that It's good to know I what don't you don't know, know it, Todd. <laughs> exactly. Bring in, bring in, bring in the talent from the other place. And that yeah. is what we've done. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Um, I, I don't want to hold you. I, I know you have a lot to do and um, I'm just totally grateful for the, the time. And um, I was ex so excited to talk to you and hear the story again, because I pivoted and I'm doing something. And so I appreciate that. Um, and other people, I think that's what life's about. Um, you know, I don't really celebrate the people that wait for the 25 year pen. It's not my, yeah. not my yeah. thing. I don't I think that's what- I want to be able to buy the watch myself. Yeah, you know? I don't think yeah. it's what God intended. So to live- I agree. Life. Well, I got to tell you, um, um, in all truth, as soon as we got on and we got rolling, I remembered the tasting. So, but initially in our, in our conversation, um, I, I do host a lot of people. And so I <laughs> you need do. Like a context. I'm going to let you like, off the hook. If I get a context, I remember I'm like rain man with the context names. I'm not so great at, but yeah. I do want to just, um, just say thanks. This is, this has been fun. Um, I've been doing some of these zoom things and a, and a couple other things and it's weird. It, it's weird. You yeah. know, it's not my I'd strength, rather be there. Yeah. This conversation was just um, fun and I enjoyed it. And um, I just want to thank you for uh, and bringing me on. Awesome. Appreciate it very much. Thanks, Todd. And, you know, we we didn't toast, but, you know, to, ah, to, salute, to you salute. and salute and to you and, and the whole Dakota Shy team to perseverance and um, keeping your chin up and, and uh, with the same grit that got you here, you'll, you'll move forward. I have full faith. So cheers. thank you to, yeah, to all of us, to the American way. We'll get through this. Totally. We have to take care. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy thank yourself. You. Come back and see me. I will be in Florida. We have something called the shy way tour. That's about to kick off. Wow. And just Is this think like rock a road and roll. Show? Think rock and roll. Okay. Think pop. Think um, talented, up and coming chefs. Okay, I'm getting my black leather pants ready. Okay. Yeah, and um, I mean, we're just gonna go on a road trip and bring. I Napa love this to idea. The rest of America. So we got more to come on that. Um, you can check it out on the website here in the next week or so. We'll have it up. Um, I will. I, I would love like to check it out. Think like the Stones meets um are you jagger or who who are you going for oh, here? i love him he's such a fanatic um i you don't know he be, has a really? new documentary i don't know if you're a netflix junkie i'm a documentary junkie i and am too so i just watch rolling stones south america it's okay it's out on netflix i will I listen if you I'm love the stones i love the stones i'm 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 best rock and roll band ever i know will get cut as beatles and zeppelin and that, 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 that <laughs> but i'm a stones man so yeah, yeah it is what it is yeah all right well thank you all right God. i'll follow I'll you. you stay okay. safe i'll see okay. you in florida all right sounds God great bless. okay thank bye bye you. better change up your perspective it's something it's something new.